Hi and welcome to module 10 of this Django course. In this module, we'll be creating an e-commerce app. So let's not waste any time, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so we're open up again on GitHub as always. Now this is the repository of this course. You find all of the steps and everything else here. Before we jump into it, please like and comment on this video. It helps me out massively. And also subscribe to the channel and click the bell. Okay, so to follow along with this video, you need to click into main and just find module 10. When you're in module 10, find steps and then open up module 10 and it will render all of the markdown language onto your screen. And these are the steps we're going to be following today. But I'm going to do it in VS Code, which is here. And this is module 10. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think that's where we are. Sorry, I was, I was tinkering around with this video earlier and I already installed it. So don't, don't worry about that. Okay. So we're in module 10 now. Follows on from module 9. Um, if you've been following along, I hope you have been, your configuration should look similar to mine or exactly the same as mine, should I say, unless you've added some other files that aren't part of the course, but it should look similar to this, but just make sure it's the same as what's on the screen here, okay? If it's not, you can pull down from module 10. CD into the root directory, fire up a virtual environment, good to go. Right, so warning, we're about to switch things up a little. It's kind of intermediate level, about to create an e-commerce app. So when I was putting this course together, I was scratching my head to figure out what type of website should I put together for demo? Consensus was e-commerce. Everyone wants to make money online. E-commerce is the way forward. So let's build it from the ground up. It's always good practice to grow, group similar logic together in a single app. We learned that in the core and the users app. We're gonna do that same. To group together everything to do with purchasing products, stocking products and things like that. We'll call it e-commerce. We will be using Stripe to handle payments, okay? So Stripe is here. Okay, you can sign up, please do. When you've signed up, it will look something similar to this. You need to, don't pay anything, just sign up if you haven't got an account and just make sure you can get a hold of your publisher call key and your, your secret key that are here, okay? Um, now, I'll be copying them and saving them, you won't see them, but you need publisher call key, which will be in a variable and secret key, which will also be in a variable in a few moments time. Good stuff, where are we, where are we? So, I've got some libraries, so, the last few modules of this course, 10 to 15, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that we're installing in terms of uh, packages. We're doing it all now, and then we're adding it to installed apps. So we're bringing in DJ Money or Django Money requests, which is a library that allows us to communicate with APIs, making post requests, get requests, and things like that. Fantastic library. We'll be using the Stripe SDK. We'll be bringing in Font Awesome Free, which gives us access to these little icons and stuff. It slows things down a lot in terms of uh, static files, but it's still good. Django Math Filters and Python Date Util. So I'll be using them in this application. Now I've already installed them because I was tinkering earlier and I didn't want to uninstall to mess things up. So use those two commands to install them and add them to the requirements file. Your requirements file will look like this, okay, when it's done. Good. You then need to start a new app with this command okay once you've got it it'll have this little um this new app here which has got all of the governs that it always comes with a new app we then need to install everything into our installed apps which are in django course settings did i remove them probably not yeah we did there we go and as you can see here we're adding e-commerce but also we're bringing in dj money on awesome free and math there was okay so we do need them that's why i've done it all in one hit in module 10. we're then adding templates so we're adding a context processor in the templates whilst we're in settings but we haven't created the context processor so we can add context to views very easily we know how to do that right so if you want to add um, a form to a context you can do that easily in the view what we want to do is actually add installed apps to our context process. So we can access installed apps into our template. So we do if statements to say, if e-commerce is in installed apps, do something or show something. If not, don't bother. Um, so that's what we're doing. We now need to create the context.py file that we're referencing here. Okay, so in Django, I've already added it. That, sorry, that's already in there, I didn't delete it. So add context.py and add this code into it. So essentially what we're doing is we're, called, we're adding a variable to context called installed apps. And all it is is settings.installed apps. 
So I can now access that in my Django templates using template tags. That's all we're doing. Save that and then move on to the next part. Done, we now need to add two variables to our settings file, right at the bottom. You need to add a um, publishable key and a secret key, okay? So the secret key, I'll do that off screen, but essentially you need to go into Stripe, go in here, you make sure you're in developers and test mode, just get your publishable key, it starts with PK, see that, PK test? Add that to publishable key, and it is a string, so make sure you wrap it up in um, speech marks, single quotes. Same goes for secret key, so delete that. And now what you wanna do is add the SK one. Now I'm just gonna pause the video. There we go, right, so I've now got my secret key in there as well. I don't need to show you that, you don't need to see it. It's in test mode anyway, and you can always uh, regenerate the keys, it's not the end of the world. But we've now got those in our project. Happy days, right, so requirements, modules, views, URLs, templates, static files. So we need to look at module models. I'm gonna go into GitHub, scroll down. Let's go to models. Copy that from there, it saves me highlighting everything. E-commerce, models, paste, save. Right, so I've tried to build these models to capture key information into our database along the process, uh, in every step of the process of, of stocking items and selling and buying items, right? So um, that's why I've got these particular tables, this or models listed in, in this models.py file. So if I go from the top, I've got an item model. Now that, look at that as stock, right? So anything listed, listed in item will be our stock, okay? So baseball caps, t-shirts and what have you. Now I've in there, that I've, I've imported a whole bunch of stuff. I've got some new bits and pieces and extensions. The first one, the one we really need to look at is title slug description. It adds a title, a description and a slug field to our model, okay? Which is really, really good when you're trying to use a detail view, a generic detail view, especially when you've got a get absolute URL. Okay, really, really helpful. So this is the item. This is our stock, our company stock, okay? Bring it in and uh, using abstracts that add different fields. We know this now, it's all good. We've got an image field, so this will be the image of the item that will be ish, uh, displayed in the shop. And then we've got stock. So we're only using integers here. We're not using floats and messing around like that. It's default of one, but you can have stock of 200, but it's a whole number. It's an integer field, zero through two. 2 million, it doesn't matter, it's a stock, it's a whole number, no decimal places, no float field. We then got a money field. Now we're calling this a variable price, uh, price because um, we wanna make sure that we have a price against an item. If somebody was to take that item and put it in a shopping cart and it lived there for a week, we still want the availability to change the price of the item. Now, if somebody has put it in their shopping cart and then they pay for it, they need to pay for the old price not the variable price. So that's why I've called it a variable price. And hopefully it will make sense in a second, but it's a money field. This is from D D uh, Django Money. Max digits 14, decimal places two, default GBP. Well, you can default that to US dollars or whatever, or a local currency, but we're just messing around and we're just making it GBP because this is my local uh, currency. Each of these models have an amount method which converts the variable price or the amount into pence. So you can't send 1.0 to Stripe, which would be one pound, it would be 100. So you have to send whole numbers of pennies or cents to Stripe, it's just the way you've got to do it, okay? And that's why we've got this amount method. Get yeah, absolute URL, that is the absolute URL of each individual database entry. So each one would have an absolute URL, which if you visit would display the details of the item, okay? Next, you've got an item manager, for, sorry, cart item manager. So think of the item as the stock, think of the cart item as your cart, your shopping cart, okay? And the cart item is what the item is when it's in your cart. The item is stock item on the shelf, cart item is item in the shelf, in the, in the cart. So the reason I've done that is to differentiate between the two is because if you've got a stock of 10 and it's on the shelf, if you take one off and put it in a shopping cart, well, the stock is now nine. Somebody else can't pick that same stock up. So I've, I've wanted to move that item into a cart item within a cart. 
Okay, makes sense in a second. So I've got a cart manager, item manager, with a method called clear items. So when um, when the user buys all of the items that are in a cart, it just clears all the items out, deletes them from the database, no need to have them anymore. And that's what that's doing here. So it would be cart item dot objects dot clear items. Uh, and then you pass through the user. So it will clear all items out of a shopping cart for a specific user. So we're building on the built-in manager that comes from Django. We're calling it cart items. Cart item, that's what we said. So that is the item that is within your shopping cart. Okay, so foreign key user, foreign key item. So this is the, um, the cart item that is linked to an actual item for a specific user, okay? If the user's deleted, then all of the cart items disappear because they're, you know, it's fluffy stuff. Um, we've got an, an amount method, and it's what's important is objects, which is the manager, equals, and you pass through the manager itself. So now we have access to that manager that we've written, okay? So nothing else fancy. You know, we've got an integer field on quantity, so this is the amount of items, and the, the amount of cart items. You then have the cart. Each user has a cart. This is a one-to-one -one field. One user has one cart, kind of two. Same way as you have a user has a user profile. Each user has one cart, simple as that, you can't have two. Okay, items, many to many fields. So you can have many cart items within your cart. So this is another field that we can use, many to many. So you can have one to one, one to many, many to many. This is, this cart can have many different cart items within it. So you can have one t-shirt, six baseball caps, four pairs of shoes, yeah? Item count, it just does a method, so it counts the amount of items in the, in the shopping cart, which is handy when you're rendering a number into your, um, your rent front end. An amount method, which goes through and actually adds up all of the amounts. So how much is your cart actually worth, how, the, the value of that cart? Add and remove, We've got an add and remove method. This adds things to the cart. It's not quite as easy as adding something to the cart. You need to create a cart item, remove stock from the items and increase the stock in your cart, okay? Hopefully this is making sense. So you have item on the shelf, cart item in your cart. Methods to move things around, move data. Item check, okay? So you pass through an item and this does a check to see if an item is in the user's cart. So these are just methods that I'm using when I create the manager a little bit later in module 11 or 12. Okay, but that'll all make sense soon enough, okay? So we create a list here using list comprehension, and then we check to see if an item is within that list. Return true if so, and return false if not. Nice and easy. Is an item in a car item? Check, uh, sorry, quantity check. So we try, car item objects get, so we try to get something and returns the quantity of said item, except, so it's a try and accept statement, car item does exist, so we return 0, 0.0, yeah? So it's either there or it's not, and if it's there, return it, if not, return 0, 0.0. Then we've got source. Now this is, this is kind of Stripe chat, so source is kind of the card that's being used. So we don't store, which is great about using a payment um, company such as Stripe, we don't sort of store card details in our database because there's all kind of legal stuff around that. So instead, what we do is we just store Stripe's kind of safe interpretation of a card against the user. So it'd be like the last four digits and the, the name that they've called the card and, that, and, and the Stripe ID. So we know that that Stripe ID is assigned to a user, but we don't have the card details on our system. Stripe holds all that because they've got the legal prowess. They know exactly what they're doing with it. They've all got their licenses and they're, they're probably ISO accredited and everything else. We don't store the data, but we do store an item in our database that represents Stripe's source. And look, we've got Stripe ID. So we're using Stripe ID across the board to reference objects in the Stripe database. Line, so this is another line reference. This is something in, so it's an invoice line in, in Stripe, but we call it line in ours. And again, Stripe ID. So this is the user, the item, the amount, Stripe ID and quantity. So when we make a call to Stripe and we get back the line from Stripe's um, SDK, we save it in our database. Okay, so this is how we sync with Stripe. So we've got a database uh, schema that kind of syncs with Stripe. So whatever happens in Stripe is in our database. Whatever happens in our database, we throw it over to Stripe so they can you know, mirror what we're doing and vice versa. You can go one step further and use webhooks, but um, we won't be looking at those just yet, not in this, not in this tutorial. 
We then have invoice, again, it's a Stripe thing, so we create an instance in our database of the Stripe invoice, and we always add a Stripe ID. That way we can always link it and sync it. Got loads of methods, go through this in your own time. You've got a wallet, so, you know, this is the wallet object that's down here. So each user has a wallet, which in turn you can kind of link invoices to, sources to, things like that. And actually the wallet, that we, the wallet is the Stripe account. So when you create a Stripe account for a user, that in turn becomes our, our user wallet. So that wallet, they can put their sources in, yeah? So it's, they have their receipts, so invoices and things. That's the idea of the wallet. Uh, we have, for the wallet, we have a manager. So, so you've got a for source uh, method that returns a wallet object query set for a given source model. Um, that we, these are just managers that are really, really helpful when working with these models. So this is the wallet. So this is a one-to-one. -one. A user can only have one wallet. So it's got a Stripe ID, and that is the uh, customer ID from Stripe. You have many-to-many, -many, so this you can have many invoices, you can have many sources, and then you pass through the wallet manager to objects. So look, there's a lot going on in this models file, a lot. But what I've tried to do, like I said, is I'm trying to make it, uh, make this, this app in a way so that um, we're kind of mirroring what would happen in a physical store. So you have a, a, a items on a shelf. You go past it in your, with, your, with your shopping cart. You take an item off, therefore it reduces the stock. It goes in your shopping cart, so your cart increases its stock. You can get distracted and never ever get to the checkout and run off and drive back home. And in which case, at some point we need to clear that and move it back to um, the, the, the stock. Or um, in turn, we can just delete you as a user, which will in turn delete your uh, cart. Another thing is when we actually get to the checkout and we pay for those items, we need a way so that we can actually create invoice lines, invoices, sources, and then clear the cart completely. Okay, so I'm trying to just manage all of those processes um, and that kind of movement of data. Okay, I don't want to do too much of a deeper dive on that, but there are models, okay? Um, that could be it for this. So no, right now we want to migrate those. Happy days, and migrate so make migrations so what we've done by doing that we've got migrations file we've got an in it and within that it's got all of these different fields and yeah so it's a much bigger migration file and by running migrate it's now migrated that all to the database okay then what have we got we have got to register these new models to admin okay so take all of this go into e-commerce admin there we go and now we can access this from the server running. Yes. Namespace PK test is not defined. Hold on. Oh no, it's better. That was a hangover from earlier. Okay, so we've now got um, the app, we've now got all of our models registered in admin. So if we were to go to um, forward slash admin in here. Uh, no, it's uh, decoding.com. I forgot I deleted that user. There we go. So now we've got access to not only user profiles, we've got access to e commerce as well. Okay, so all of the different bits and pieces in there. So where are we now? Where are we? Where are we? No, we want to be VS Code and uh, tutorial bit. Turn this down. Where are we? Root direct. That's it. Okay, so this was a bit of a longer one actually because I wanted to do a bit of a deeper dive on models because models are key, right? So we want to be saving information to the database. So the schema that we use needs to be robust enough to handle the e-commerce app. So we're going to be writing views and URLs and a manager to work with the SDK in the following modules. But look, if you've liked this video, please drop me a like and a comment and subscribe to the channel so that you're notified every time I add a video. But comments are most important for me because I love the feedback. That's the end of module 10. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in module 11. Thank you. Bye-bye.